Hey, Tony, uh, I just wondered about uh, Darrington. You know, what have you seen from him? What would you like to see from him? How much is his work, you know, catching the ball? Obviously, it seems like that's going to be an important part of his job. But where do you think he is right now? Uh, he's uh, First, it's, it's great that he's out there running around. He's getting, uh, had, the, had a chance to get a lot of work here in these last couple of weeks. Uh, so I'm excited about him. Uh, he's, he's progressing well. Uh, he's taking advantage of all these different opportunities he's had, you know, uh, obviously without pads, we're somewhat limited in the run stuff. So there's just more opportunities uh, to work him in some different things um, that we're doing. So uh, I'm, I'm excited about it. He's in a good place uh, and he's getting better each, each day, each opportunity. Real fast, is, is pass protection a big, you know, a, a key for him in terms of, you know, really securing that role? And where is he there? Absolutely. Um, pass protection is important and critical for all backs, you know, um, because if we can't do that, part of it, it really limits what what we can do and what, what your role will be. So it's critical for all the backs to, to um, be as good as they can be uh, and, and pass protection. So he, he's doing fine. You know, again, this is just the time that we get to work a lot of uh, fundamentals and techniques uh, because we don't get the physical part of it um, with, without pads on. So we'll just continue to work that and, and he'll continue to get better in that way. John Glennon. Hey, Tony. Um, just wanted to get your thoughts also on, on a couple of things. One, uh, Brian Hill, uh, Im impressions on uh, what he is bringing uh, uh, to you guys and, and what your thoughts have been on him so far. Uh, Brian, first and foremost, is, is a great human being. Uh, he's been a pleasure to be around as a person. Uh, he does a, a great job in the meeting room and meetings, uh, taking it all in. Uh, so, and he's fun to be around, kind of a quiet person, but he gets his little jokes in. Uh, as far as a player, you know, I think he brings some versatility versatility to the group. Uh, he's obviously done it uh, for a number of years uh, in Atlanta uh, as a runner. And then he's shown the ability to catch the ball out of the backfield as well as protect. So, he's shown, uh, again, without pads, he's shown the ability to, um, you know, do a pretty good job in all three of those areas that we'll be asking him uh, to execute in. So I'm excited about seeing what he looks like uh, as we put pads on here when we get back to camp and see where see where it goes from there. Yeah, I was also going to ask you about, uh, you know, of course, the addition of Julio is, is big for everybody. And what could that potentially mean for Derek, uh, you know, maybe in terms of creating – more space opportunities on, on the field and, and potentially, I guess, even maybe getting him a little bit more rest uh, as well. Uh, I'm not sure what that'll, you know, I'm not sure what that means other than we've added another uh, good football player or great football player to our team. I'm going to focus on getting the backs fundamentally and technique, technique sound and uh, however Todd, uh, and Braves and Keith and the rest of our offensive staff. You know, when we get in the game plan, and we'll see what that means. Thank you. Tim Wyatt. Good to see you, Tony. I'm, I'm a follow up hey, on dude. Brian uh, as far as his pass catching ability. I mean, I, I guess you'll watch a lot of film on him before you got him. Is, is he catch the ball pretty effortlessly? And is that, could that be a, 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 a a way that he can earn himself onto the field if he shows his ability to do that? Sure. Um, again, he, he's done it for a number of years in the league, and he's shown the ability to catch the ball out of the backfield. So, again, as we uh, finish up here with mini camp and then go into camp, all that stuff will be evaluated. And certainly that, that the more any individual player can do to help the team, the better for that person. So, uh, I am looking forward to seeing what Brian does. I know what he's done, like you said, in the past, uh, but the past is the past, and we'll see what it looks like uh, going forward here once we get back in the camp. And, and, and kind of what's next for Corey? And, and you, I know you've kind of raved about him and his professionalism in the past. How, how, what does he do to kind of put himself in a position to be successful, not only as a blocker, but any other way that you need him? 
Uh, Carly's done a, um, a good job uh, from a physical standpoint. Obviously, he looks like he uh, really hit the weights and, and those things and worked pretty hard this offseason when he walked back in here. Uh, so he's doing the things that he needs to do to help the team, uh, to carve a rollout and help the team. So, again, once we – you know, it's kind of hard for the fullback. Again, good. it's good that he's getting – uh, the fundamental work and the technique work. But, you know, as we know, the big part of his job will come when we put the pads on uh, in July in training camp in August. So I'm certainly uh, looking forward to that, to see the carryover from, you know, the hard work he's put in the off season uh, to what he's done in OTAs to improve from a fundamental standpoint and then see what it looks like when we put pads on and, and the bullets start flying. Uh, Terry? Tony, back to Darrington for a minute. When you look back on the way things were last year with COVID and the, you know, no in-person practices and things like that, how much did a guy like him really miss in terms of installation and uh, getting ready for his rookie season? And what are some of the things that uh, maybe you've done for him and some of the other guys that uh, to kind of make sure that what they – what they can do now is certainly up to speed and on the level. Well, I think uh, for all of us, missing the on-field time uh, last spring um, certainly is, is some, it's important. You know, if it wasn't, then for all the years that, that the, the NFL has been doing it, um, you know, we, we'd have to feel, we'd have to say that it's important or based on what I've seen in this league, if it wasn't important to something that had little value, I don't think the league would subscribe to it. So, you know, missing it obviously is important, uh, particularly coming in uh, as a first year player that that time on the field, we were able to do, and I know it's still some, a little bit different uh, doing Zoom meetings in, in particular because everything was a first for all of us in terms of all these Zoom meetings and things like that. Uh, but Darrington's a smart, smart kid. So uh, he was able to pick up things from a mental standpoint. But, you know, anytime that you can be out on the grass and working together as a unit, it, it's beneficial for everyone. So I think we all uh, missed that time and we're excited to have that time back now. And then for, for the whole group, just being out there, you know, obviously you, you develop the camaraderie as a position group. I think some of that's lost when you're doing it just by Zoom. But uh, so that part has been really good. And then just being back on the field and being hands on where they're physically moving around and seeing pictures change on the field as opposed to seeing, you know, still shots or pictures changing on a video screen is significantly different than when a body's moving out in front of you. So uh, just getting back to our, our normal fundamentals and technique teaching on the field has been really good. And then to have in-person meetings where we could stand up and demonstrate something more, we could have walkthroughs, all that stuff's been really good for the entire group. I'm gonna try to squeeze uh, three more in here. Uh, David, Beauclerc. Tony, you understand Derrick Henry's work habits as well as anyone. How much have you seen the, the videos that keep popping up online of his workouts this year? And have you seen anything in them that surprises you or amazes you in any way? Uh, I've seen probably two of them. Uh, I know that they're out there. Um, so, it no, does anything surprise me? I, I saw the one where he was doing push-ups. Um, on the ball with the chain around his neck. And then uh, last week, someone showed me the one where he uh, did a box jump. Um, so no, it doesn't really, uh, it's all amazing, but it doesn't surprise me because of his work ethic. You know, um, I'm extremely uh, blessed to have an opportunity to coach in this organization, but then to have an individual player like that uh, to coach is, that has such a, a uh, really good work ethic, an amazing work ethic. Uh, it's, it's been it's been a blessing, and, I, and uh, you keep pulling for guys like him to have success because of the work that they put in, just like everybody else. No different than the work, you know, Jeremy McNichols has put in or Darrington or Kari or these rookies that are playing. You know, it's it's great to see those guys with those kind of work ethics succeed. Uh, Teron? 
What's up, Coach Tony? Uh, I, I, I talked to Deion Lewis a couple years ago, and he said that an OC in uh, Cleveland told him to watch um, Darren Sproles, and that was a way that he could make himself have a, a, a long career in the league. Have you pointed to any particular players for Darrington to watch as far as like from a pass catch, catching perspective? Um, we, you know, this spring we've, we've looked at, uh, a couple different things. We looked at, uh, some stuff from new England and, and how they've used their backs in the past. Looked a little bit at, um, Naheem, Naheem Hines from Indianapolis. Uh, so that's just prelimi prelimi preliminary, uh, film watching the spring, but as we go through the summer, uh, we'll, we'll, I'll find some other clips of, of guys that, uh, have been three down type backs, guys that have been used out of the backfield, uh, whether it be Ezekiel Elliott. Uh, there's some things that obviously uh, Saquon Barkley's done, Dion, uh, when he was here and the things that he's done. So uh, a little bit of uh, Rex, uh, Burkhead. So there's a number of guys that we can look into and make cut ups and, and things to give him to watch to just to see guys that have done it in the NFL and done it at a high level for a long time. Uh, last one, uh, Ben Arthur. Hey, hey, Tony, sorry if you've been asked some variation of this question. I just kind of hopped on, but I was just wondering, just kind of entering this season, how, in what ways does, you know, the, the way that you maybe dare it, that you monitor um, Derek's um, workload change um, going into this season, just knowing, you know, how many carries he's had the, the last couple years and with the addition of a 17th game, how, how does maybe the, the way you guys watch him change uh, for 2021? Uh, we have not really gotten to that point where we're discussing that as a, as a staff yet, uh, offensive staff or with Coach Vrabel. So as, as we get into camp and those things come up, obviously we'll discuss it. Uh, but at this point, you know, the, the thing is getting, getting him and all the guys out in the practice and, we get in the camp, getting him, you know, it'll be one of those things where when the boss comes in and says, hey, uh, we're going to do something different, then we'll do it. Uh, until he does, I'm just going to go out when we have individual and team and group. Derek loves to be in practice just like everyone else every time. Anytime that um, he, he uh, is suggested that he takes some reps off, he, he doesn't like it. He likes to be out there with the rest of the guys working. So, until I'm told otherwise, that's what we're going to do. Put him out there, let him work, and, and uh, get himself better. Uh, make Help help do whatever he can, help the team get better. And then uh, if and when, you know, the boss or, or Coach Downing comes around and, and says, hey, let's, let's do something different, then we'll do something different.